Chunk, 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 Hey everybody, John Yossi here. Great to see you. We're back with another edition of Practical MDO. Today we're talking about explicit and implicit systems. So the words explicit and implicit have specific meanings in the English language depending on how you're using them. And in searching for how to introduce this concept for this lecture, I, I found this visualization of an iceberg. I was thinking about the explicit language warnings on, on CDs and other music. But what we're talking about today is not about any of that. It's about explicit and implicit systems. So let's talk about that. Put into words, an explicit system is any one where the outputs are only a function of the inputs. However, an implicit system is one where the outputs are a function of the inputs and the outputs. It kind of depends on itself. We'll get more into what that means and I'll show some examples. But in the case of OpenMDO and MDO modeling, you can think of explicit systems as one where you can write uh, just one equation or a set of equations that takes the inputs and maps them to the outputs, whereas the implicit ones need to have some sort of relationship that is being solved for. This absolutely has to do with the modeling category of this course. So first, let me just explain what are implicit and explicit functions. First up, I'll show an explicit function. Here we see y equals 5x minus 2. It's, it's so simple. We have x as the inputs, y as the outputs. You can see on the right-hand side, there's no notion of why. Why doesn't depend on itself. Now on the bottom here, we have the same explicit function rewritten as an implicit function. Here we have y minus 5x plus 2 equals 0. It might not make much sense to write the equation in, the, in this format yet, but I hope that we can kind of motivate that later and explain why when you write something like this in the implicit setup, it's generalizable for any number of inputs or outputs or any kind of relationships between them. Now, although we could have written that, that explicit equation that I showed you before in an implicit way and vice versa, there are sometimes cases where we cannot write an implicit equation in an explicit way. Take, for instance, y to the fourth plus y equals zero. Here, y depends on itself, and there's no notion of inputs or outputs. Y is this kind of state variable. You might look at this and think, okay, what are some solutions for y? I can kind of try to rearrange it here. I know that y to the fourth must equal negative y. You can kind of reason it out. But in a general sense, an implicit system is one where either the inputs or outputs or some combination thereof affect the outputs. Let me show you a kind of diagrammatical breakdown of an implicit system. Here we have three components, A, B, and C, and they're passing some data between them, in this case, X and Y. Now this is an implicit system. In this case, for the XDSM parlance, we have a lower diagonal or backwards coupling here. C is providing the output Y and it goes to A. A uses Y to compute X, which passes it to B. Now, although this looks like an implicit system, we can rearrange the order of these components or subsystems to obtain an explicit system. If we simply move C to the beginning of the execution order, we could get C, A, B here, and it's all feed forward here. So I simply want to bring this up because there are some times where you might have an implicit system that you can rearrange in order to get an explicit system. In general, explicit systems are easier to solve and uh, provide kind of a, a more straightforward way to model your system. However, there are many, many cases in the real world where we need to model implicit systems. Let's talk about that. Maybe the most straightforward or common one, if you come from the aircraft design side of things, is aerostructural wing coupling. So the aerodynamics feeds information to the structures and vice versa, creating an implicit relationship for the performance of the wing. But let's talk about another example. Another example comes from one of my friend and colleague's work, Shamshir Chahan. He looked at aeropropulsive coupling specifically for propellers over wings. This is all the rage in vertical takeoff and landing aircraft or VTOL aircraft. And you can imagine that, okay, yeah, a propeller is blowing air over the wing. Inherently, there's coupling of the performance of the wing and the propeller. There's this implicit relationship that we need to resolve. Hey there, while I was editing this, I realized that I only showed examples of multidisciplinary implicit systems. I would like to highlight the idea that there are many single disciplinary systems that are implicit. Here, there's an example from the OpenMDO docs where there's an electrical circuit which needs implicit components to be modeled correctly. I just want to be clear here, there are many cases, such as aerodynamics alone, structures alone, electrical circuits, where you do have implicit systems. Okay, back to the show. Let me kind of walk you through the idea of an implicit component and an equivalent explicit setup. So here is an implicit system. And I want to show you this because it's a very kind of important nuanced idea. Here we have two components. One of them is computing y, y equals x squared, and another is computing x, x equals 3y. Each one of these green blocks by itself is an explicit component. 
you can see that the inputs are only what's needed to compute the outputs. However, by putting them together, by creating this coupled system, we actually have an implicit system, despite the fact that each one of these components itself is only explicit. I bring this up because you might be writing a model, you might be using OpenMDO, and you might say, well, I don't have an implicit system because I only have explicit components. And that's not necessarily the case. You should always check for any kind of backwards feedback coupling here. I also want to introduce the idea of having a series of explicit components or one implicit component that does the same thing. So previously we had an implicit system, which was a series of explicit components that are talking to each other, passing information and creating this kind of implicit setup. But we can also have a singular component that is implicit. If we rearrange the equations here, we can see, okay, y equals 9y squared and uh, 3x squared equals x. We can also rearrange that now to the same kind of nomenclature that we had before, where we have two equations that we're trying to get equal to zero. Here you can imagine this as a series of two equations with two unknowns. In the general case, this is an implicit system. Any input or output can be influencing another output. When I talk about implicit systems, know that it's the most general sense, it's the most general idea of systems that can be solved in OpenMDAO. This lesson is not about how to solve those or how to set up the systems. I simply want to introduce the idea and the distinction of explicit and implicit. Now, how do we use implicit models correctly? Again, I can't get into all the details here, but just know that if we have an implicit system, be it through an implicit component or a series of explicit components that have some sort of implicit coupling, if we have a system like that, we need to have a set of solvers to resolve this implicit relationship. Here's an XDSM of an actual aircraft design problem that we're working on here. And as you can see, there is some information on the lower triangular side of things that is being passed back to solvers. This implicit relationship needs to be resolved using solvers. Here is an N squared diagram that shows, okay, if we have this control iter group here, and it's got this backwards coupling on the, on the lower triangular part of the matrix, we need to have a solver. And so I'm kind of highlighting that here, that if there's this coupling, then we need to have this Newton solver over here or some type of solver. Please don't look at this and say, oh, I'm overwhelmed by everything that, that I'm seeing here on this N squared. Just know that, okay, if we have an implicit system, we need a solver of some sort. Other lessons will go into more detail about how best to set up those solvers and when to use them. So the whole point of today's lesson is simply to introduce the idea of explicit and implicit systems. Explicit systems can be written as the outputs are functions only of the inputs, whereas implicit systems have outputs that are functions of inputs and outputs. Other lessons will go into more detail about how to model your system explicitly or implicitly, how to compute derivatives of implicit systems especially, because that can sometimes be confusing, and also how to set up your solver hierarchy to resolve the implicit coupling here. As always, please hit those like and subscribe buttons, and guys, gals, and non-binary pals, thanks for watching. Bye.